Hello, everyone. Welcome to Confidence Through Cabaret. My name is Heather. I'm one of the co-pioneers of Confidence Through Cabaret, welcoming you to Work It Out Thursday. We're talking all about goals this week because our theme has been about starting over. And whatever time of year you're seeing this, whatever day of the week that you're seeing this, you're all good. It's right where you're meant to be. But what we're talking about as a theme is starting over. So we had uh, a kickoff with our masterclass from our website, our wonderful Mia talking about starting over. And our website can be found at www.confidencethroughcabaret.com. So please do join us there and you can check out the masterclasses on there. And then we talked about our personal goals on Tuesday. And so today I wanted to pick back up and talk about work goals. And those 10 points that I gave you, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Think about what those goals are about for you and what each step is about. And you can follow it step by step. There's also a masterclass on our website on confidencethroughcabaret.com. And you can follow along with a workbook that we have that's downloadable there on our masterclass um, on our website. So on Wednesday, we spoke to the wonderful Patrick and Andy on our podcast. You can also check that out wherever you get your podcasts. And they were talking about starting their own business all over again. And I know that starting over is sometimes quite mm, t intimidating, I'm going to say. Doesn't maybe not quite the right word, but I know that Confidence Through Cabaret, which we started about four months ago, is brand new. And yet I've had my own businesses for 25 years as a training consultant and as a business coach. So it's, it's a whole new world when you're starting again. And it's so important to be setting our goals, whether you've been in a job or in a business for a long time, or whether you're just starting out again. But our business goals are, are a lot around being aware of what contributions we're making and what progress we're making in our work life. You know, we spend over half of our waking hours in and around work. So that is things like getting up and getting ready for work. That is, if you have a commute to work anymore, that's a commute to work. That's, you know, working. And then at best, you work eight hours, perhaps you work a little bit longer, maybe a little bit shorter, but then by the time you get home and you unwind and you make time for yourself, it's more than half of your waking hours if you're sleeping healthy number of hours. So it's important that we feel the progress in what we're doing because we're not meant to be machines that just do the work and churn it out. And not all of us have a business where we feel like we're really succeeding and we're really on track. I mean, some of us do, and that's fantastic. You equally need goals if it's going well, because you need to be able to recognize what's going well, what's causing it to go well, and how to continue that success. So on Tuesday, we talked about goal setting and we said that goals need to be stated in the positive. So what are you working towards? And whether you have your own business or whether you're in an established business that's not your own, then it's important that you know what you'll be working on. So what are your goals? Oftentimes uh, in, in businesses, they'll set like annual goals or even six monthly goals to say, what do I need to achieve in this in the foreseeable future? And then we break it down into smaller chunks. So if you're in an established business, you've probably got some sort of a performance management program, which I've spent decades uh, training people in, in businesses on how to get the most out of that. And this is really about, you know, saying, what are my milestones to tell me that I'm on track to achieving what I need to achieve in the role that I have? So then collectively, if you think about it, you have a, a business goals or targets, and then it breaks down into smaller, you know, maybe directorates or departments, and then, um, or even branch goals. And then that breaks down into what does each individual need to achieve in order to achieve the collective, in order to achieve the, the, the business goals. So if you have your own business, you still need to be thinking of those things. And I think, you know, if you have your own business, then it can be really easy to say, oh, I have these, these targets and these goals and this, this is what I'm working on and not actually break it down kind of by department. So maybe you would have social media goals, for example, and then you might have, I don't know, new client goals, or you might have, um, you know, how you maintain your current client clients and goals around that. Um, you might have uh, financial 
goals. But break it down into different sections that are manageable and relevant to your business if it is your own. And if it's not your own, then you'll be working usually with your line manager. Although I have to say some line managers out there are a bit naughty and, and don't go through that with you. I would say, and I do say to clients, if your line manager isn't supportive of setting measurable positive goals, then set them for yourself or spend some time with your team members to set them. But just make sure that you have something to work towards because it's so important for us to feel motivated and to feel like we're making a valuable contribution in our work life. So state your goals in the positive. What am I working towards? Make sure that you're stating a balance of, you know, um, goals that are around um, what you need to do and also how you need to do that. And so usually in an established business, we would talk about behaviors or competencies in the how. In the, in the what side of things, that will very often be, you know, targeted, led by whatever your, your role is. So the what and the how are, are of equal importance. And most businesses nowadays, thankfully, will say that, but some will put more emphasis on what you achieve rather than how you achieve it. So in other words, our behaviors, I'm saying, are as important and as valuable as our actual measurable output because how we go about it aligns in terms of our work culture and work environment and the kind of experience that customers might have, whether they're internal or external customers. So when you state what you will achieve, make sure, especially if you're working in an environment where those goals are kind of preset for you or with you, as in, you know, if, you have, if you're an employee, then make sure that those goals are achievable. Now, if they're given to you and you don't have a say in it, then question, how can I get the support in order for me to be able to achieve this? Because as it is right now, I don't feel like it is achievable, but it's not a negative thing. It's all in how you say it. So I, I respect that these are the targets. How am I going to do that? And what support can I expect? to enable me or to help me figure out how to do it. So that might be some sort of coaching or mentoring from your manager, that might be from another part of the business. If you have your own business, then stating what you want to achieve and why is so important because it, it keeps you focused on what it is that you're trying to do and the importance of that. And there will be setbacks in your own business and if you're an employee as well, but there will be setbacks and knowing that why is all important. And you can go back and listen to the video from Tuesday around um, more content around stating, you know, the what and the and what you'll achieve and why. And um, the next thing would be to break it down into manageable chunks. And I said to you that, um, you know, if you were setting your own personal goals, then you would set these milestones. Well, that would be true with work as well. So that would be about putting some time scales against where you, you're meant to be. And that's not meant to be a threat or in any way kind of to check up on you and make sure you're doing it. It's actually, you, if you can think in your, if you can, if you can have it in your mindset that this is really about, um, milestones this is really to check in and yeah some months I might be behind and some months I might be way ahead but but it's a way of kind of checking in and it's a way of kind of making sure that you stay on track to enable you to ask for and accept help if you need it or to adjust the targets if they need to be or to pivot onto you know when new things come up new opportunities new products and services come up then you can pivot on that if you've got it broken down into manageable chunks because you can say well this piece can wait because it's less of a priority and this other piece needs to happen this month or this week so make sure that you're honest and realistic with yourself. And if you're an employee, make sure that you're on, honest and realistic with your line management or your HR team or whomever you discuss performance targets with. If it's your own business, be honest with yourself. I actually have an accountability partner and that enables me to 
to talk about you know what I'm going to be doing. We're both coaches, um, although I wouldn't say we coach one another. What we do is we update one another and then share. We we have different uh, skills that that the other one needs. So um, we'll say let's talk in two weeks time or one week time and let's check back in. And it it makes me want to get it done in time for that call so that I can at least be in progress and have some, some sort of an update. Although, although I am aware that I'm accountable to myself in my own business. Um, I also have a partner. Ryan is my partner you'll have seen on Confidence with Coffee. Uh, and we check in with each other. And again, it's not checking up on each other. It's just kind of update status. And that keeps me focused on what I need to be to be doing and that enables us to come on to the next thing which is measurement so how are you measuring now if you're given targets by uh your line manager or your business um then i would say make sure that it's clear how that will be measured so my favorite question under measurement is how will i know or how will we know or how will you know if this has been achieved so then that helps us define what that's about. And I know some people use SMART, which is specific, measurable, achievable, uh, realistic, and times timed or time scaled. Um, and there are variations on that depending on, on what your organization is. But um, the measurables will keep you on track. The measurables will make sure that you have been specific and realistic and that you're checking in on the right time scales and so on. So how will I know when I'm when I'm achieving it and how will I be able to report that back? And if you are working for an organization, make sure that you're keeping track of what you're doing. And if, you, if you're doing other things that weren't part of your initial objectives, make a note of those, keep track of those so that when it comes time for your monthly or quarterly or, or, or half yearly review, you can then go back and say, I haven't been working on this as much as we expected. I have been doing these other things, which hopefully your line manager is aware of, but sometimes there are, you know, vacancies in the position or things change or we don't have the communication that we would like to have. So the next thing would be to have contingency plans. And the contingency plans would be about what are my other options? And if you're an employee, then how would I get support? Where would my support come from? What's accessible to me? Are there learning tools? Are there um, you know, other people who have been through this or done this before that could, could help me or support me or give me ideas? And have that discussion with your line manager. If you're working in your own business, then have that discussion with other people who are in the same kind of field and talk to them about what resources they use and where you can get support and share what you have as well. So posting your goals uh, somewhere, I said to you with personal goals, keep them on the fridge or on your on your bathroom mirror or, or, or wherever you're gonna see them on a regular basis. But in this case, don't put your agreement into a file, close the file or close the drawer or wherever you keep your agreements, actually have somewhere where you're gonna check back in with yourself. And even if that's every few days or at the end of each week, it's a really good way of reminding yourself of, you know, I'm terrible for sort of going off and helping somebody do something and then not getting my own work done. So it's a good way of kind of keeping you on track so that you remember what you need to be doing. Um, if you work for yourself and that's new for you, then it can be difficult to have that self-discipline. So again, keeping that on track and reviewing that, how am I doing? And if you have an accountability partner or if you can have a coach or if you, if you have a supportive line manager or mentor of some sort, that's a really great way. And then the most important thing in goals, because they were meant to be us achieving something, then celebrate your wins. Do you know, make sure that you are feeding back how you're doing. Make sure that you're telling others how you're doing. Make sure that others are there to support you and then celebrate for yourself in a way that is, is really relevant. That could be the smallest win. That could be the biggest win, do you know? But the fact that you have made a certain number of sales calls could be a fantastic way of measuring when it's time to celebrate. You know, I'm going to do 10 calls and then I'm going to celebrate celebrate rather than I'm going to achieve, you know, five sales and that might be 50 calls, I, you know, so celebrate what you are doing, celebrate what and how you're doing, because the mental health and the behaviors and the competencies, those are all important. The rest can be trained. 
So thank you for joining me. Join me on all of the social medias at Confidence Through Cabaret. We'll be talking about Focus on You this week. And we'll be talking next week all about work life, personal life, and stage life again. Join me on Twitter at, a, at YBYWYS. And join me on Clubhouse at Heather YBYWYS. And those letters stand for your body, your world, your stage. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow where we focus on you.